it's funny, I didn't expect to have to move inside so quickly, but uh, where I live, it looks like my landlord is getting ready to do some yard work, and as loud as that is, with electric and gas-powered trimmers, might not be able to hear me when I record this, so I guess the Lord's saying today, after reading one of my devotionals, that count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations, although that's not such a big deal because I knew eventually we would come in from the sunshine and sit inside and maybe just share a word or two from the Lord. Daily light is where we're at, and you know, I love this chair because it rocks, you know, it just rocks back and forth and sometimes the simplest of oh, pleasures are the best. Although I must not be much of a executive, I'm sitting cross-legged in a typical chair. <laughs> must be the hippie in me. Uh, but God knows and God meets you right where you're at today. So. If you're sitting cross-legged in a nice office chair, or used office chair, <laughs> or if you're relaxing sitting back on your couch and you got a laptop somewhere, or if you're at Starbucks or someplace and you have that ability to be able to go and do and enjoy the goodness of the Lord that He's blessed you with, then I pray that today He meets you right where you're at and enjoys you as you are, for such is as our God is. He delights in his children, and he wants to meet with you, not just today, but every day. Never man spoke like this man. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend. All bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. He taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Let the word of God, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. The word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what God does for us. That's what God is doing to you from inside you. Devotionals I love and I enjoy and I advocate always that God speaks to them and that he's reaching out to you and he'll speak to you, you know, through a donkey, a jackass, or a pastor, you know, whichever the case may be. And he'll speak to you through your Bible studies. He'll speak to you through your wife or your husband. He'll speak to you through... Yeah, the gentlest of breezes, the hummingbird that visits. It's not a universalism of God, because God is a person, and Jesus is the exemplification of God, that person. He represents God in a physical form. And when we get to heaven, we'll see God as a spirit. And we'll know him better, though we won't know him completely, than we do now. But you know, there is more yet to be known in how God wants to meet with you than just simply devotionals or even the Bible. God wants to reveal himself to you. God wants you to be aware of him in you. God wants to walk with you today. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> He's always hearing from you. But he wants you to hear from him. Daily Light Evening says, The triumphing of the wicked is short. Thou shalt bruise his heel. This is your hour and the power of darkness. 
As the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Resist the devil, and he will flee. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnashes upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under his feet shortly. The devil was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> He come to judge, is what Flip Wilson used to say, and you know what? As the day gets shorter and the end gets closer and we see that Jesus is coming, he come to judge, he come to judge, he come to judge. I hope my wife isn't watching. <laughs> but God is coming to judge the wicked and the righteous. But more than that, he's coming to cast evil out of his creation. He's coming to remove one third of the angels that fell and followed Satan. He's coming to annihilate the accuser of the brethren, Satan, forever. He created hell for one reason, and he created the lake of fire only for one reason, and that was to cast and to separate those angels who rebelled against God into it. It was never his intention that you should go there, nor see it, nor know of it, for it is designed for the angelic. God forbid why we would reject so precious a salvation that Jesus paid the price of dying on the cross for us, and that he would suffer the indignation of Satan being able to inspire the torment that he went through for our sins. Why would anyone choose to go to hell? Since God said that's where everyone is going, we need to resist that temptation to take our salvation lightly, but rather be reminded daily in devotion, in emotion, in emotional, in any way, in any shape, in any form, in any format that God reaches out to touch and speak to you, we need to know and remind ourselves we were never intended to go to hell, but God intended to save the world. And if that isn't to be sober and to be vigilant, I don't know what is. Not that we should take our salvation for granted and that it's already an accomplished thing and that we're once saved, always saved, but rather, rather, fine line here about once saved, always saved. If you're in a relationship, you know you're saved. But if you're out of a relationship, I question where you are. And I hope you aren't taking for granted the idea of once saved, always saved. Because in reality, only Jesus can determine the salvation of a soul. Does he know you? I hope so. And if you know him, and he is fellowshipping with you, I hope you share him with someone else today. Sometimes we need to be serious about our salvation and share it with others. God bless you. Ha <laughs> ha.